Hi, I'm Rachel Marie from the Australian and New Zealand Fontan Advisory Committee and with me is Professor Eve de Udicum, um, who's a cardiac, paediatric cardiac surgeon here at the Royal Children's Hospital and Deputy Director of Cardiac Surgery here as well. He's also the Founder and Director of the ANZ Fontan Registry. Thanks very much for being here. Um, I thought we might start if you could please explain what actually is the Fontan Circulation. Uh, Rachel, you and I were both born with uh, two pumping heart chambers. So uh, the left pumping heart chambers which pumps the blood into the body and the right pumping heart chambers that pumps the blood into the lungs. Well some babies were born with only one pumping heart chambers or hearts where it was not possible to make the cut between the two pumping heart chambers. So for these babies we can do a series of operations to maintain them alive because that situation is not compatible with life. And the last one of these operations is the Fontan operation, named after Francis Fontan, who was a cardiac surgeon from Bordeaux, France. Mm -hmm. So what happens in the Fontan operation is that the lung uh, the, the, the vein coming back from the body, the from the lower part of the body and the upper part of the body are connected directly into the lung arteries. So after the frontal operation, the blood goes directly from the body into the lungs instead of going to the heart and being pumped into the lungs. And that is an extraordinary circulation. It was amazing to see that could last and it could last for so long, but it does give issues. Uh, this kid have higher pressure in the veins and that's what gives the drive of the blood to be pushed through the lungs but this higher pressure in the veins puts strain on the organs in particular the liver the kidneys um, and that's what we're studying Great. could you just explain to people what actually is involved in a fontan procedure and the variations of that so initially what happened is that uh, the operation was designed in a very simple way. So Francis Fontan used the right collecting chamber to drive the blood from the vein from the upper and the lower part of the body into the lungs. So there's a, a little appendage of this collecting chamber that was connected to the lung arteries and the rest of the collecting chamber that was connected to the pumping chamber or the other collecting chamber was closed. We call it the classical frontal or the atrial pulmonary frontal. What they noticed after 15 years is that because likely of the turbulent flow in that collecting chamber, that collecting chamber start to dilate and in that collecting chamber the blood was not flowing very quickly so they had clots in there, there was a stretch of this collecting chamber and that caused fast heart rate and it even sometimes compressed the, the vein coming back from the lungs. So uh, De Laval, uh, at the end of the 80s modified the operation. He understood that the most important thing for the frontal circulation was to have a good streaming of the blood flow. Something that is well lined up with no kinking, nothing in the way of the blood between the body and the lungs. And so he modified the design of the frontal by connecting the vein from the upper part of the body, detach it from the connecting chamber and connect it directly to the lung arteries. And then he created a baffle, uh, a chamber made of half of a Gore-Tex tube and half of the normal uh, H1 wall and that was connected again at the bottom of the lung arteries. And then in the 90s, the natural evolution of that, if you want to have a simple operation with nothing in the way of the blood between the body and the lungs, the natural evolution was to do the extra cardiac frontal procedure, where the vein from a part of the body is still connected to the lung arteries, but the vein from the lower part of the body is attached to a tube, an artificial tube, that is then connected to the lung arteries. And we have demonstrated that the second and the third operation are better than the first one. They give, it gives less problem 20, 30 years later. And the third one is a little bit better than the second one. There's not yet a lot of difference between the two. Thank you. 
So the, uh, the ANZ Fontan Registry itself was started in 2009. Just wondering if you could tell people a little bit about what the motivation was um, in terms of starting that up and what are your goals and plans for that going forward? When we started this registry, we didn't have any idea what was happening to this Fontan. The longest studies were 15 to 20 years and the people said all kinds of things. I heard people saying, you know what happens to these people where we do a Fontan, half of them are, are dead uh, within uh, 10 years and the other half will be dead within 20 years, which was not what we were finding. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do is to show what was happening to the Fontan population, those with a Fontan circulation, and we needed a registry because if you look back at your data, you're always five, ten year, years later than reality. You need a registry if you want to have a pulse on what is happening, because we're changing. So we're doing more complex operations, we're operating kits that we wouldn't have operated before. So we want to measure at all time the changes on our practice. And so that was the first motivation. The second motivation is uh, we wanted to build up the research necessary for this population. What happened is that the Fontan circulation is offered to a vast array of conditions. You can have a small right ventricle, a small left ventricle, you can have multiple holes in the heart, a problem of connections, and you can have other parts of your body or your heart that are abnormal. And so when you're talking about a Fontan, it's not like all the other kids who have a Fontan. For that reason, it's very difficult to build up research. If you have a disease like coronary artery disease, aortic valve disease, you can line up hundreds of patients who are almost exactly the same. It's very different in the Fontan population. And so to progress the research, you need large numbers. And what everybody was doing is was doing little things on the corner, but nothing big was done in research because you don't have the sheer numbers to do that research. And we wanted to build the perfect tool to build up the research to improve what happens to these with a, a full-time circulation. Great, thank you. So in 2014, the first um, Fontana Education Day was held here in Melbourne, and since then they've been held in other cities in Australia and New Zealand. Again, what was the motivation behind that event, and what are you hoping that the community get out of those Education Days? The, the first motivation uh, was to improve the communication uh, with the families, uh, with the patients who had a Fontana operation. Uh, and it was just relaying information. Uh, the goal as well was to give them immediately the information. As you know, when you do research, it takes you two years to do the research, and then you analyze your data for six months, you send an abstract to a meeting, to have it presented, it's accepted, a year later you present it, you submit the paper, and then it's published two or three years later sometimes. So you have sometimes a four or five years delay between you, uh, the uh, patients with the front end circulation, doing the research and having the results in your hands. We want to shortcut that. You are doing the research, you participate, you should be the first one to know. It has not been digested, we don't have, we haven't made all the whole interpretation, but we give it back to you immediately. That was the first goal. But then something magical happened during these days. The first uh, thing magical that we did not expect is that we built up a community. And your group has been the direct uh, consequence of this community building. Suddenly, you had in the same room 200 people who thought they were alone on earth to have these issues. They had nobody to talk to for their whole life. And then suddenly they all together, they could share their experience and they could learn from the bad stories, the good stories that the other people had. But they were not alone anymore. And it's a very important driver for the research for us as well, is that we can say these people are there together and they want something. And then the other thing that we did not expect is that you get a picture of what is happening to these patients much more. If you gather 200 people in the same room, the feedback you're getting is unbelievable. If you see one patient, uh, you know, and then the next one will be 
three weeks later, two months later. I mean, some of the cardiologists you see only five children, adolescents, who had a frontal operation. What expertise do you gain with that? Mm -hmm. When you have 200 in the same room, you, you gain much more knowledge. And so now, because of this education day, I think that we have a much better communication with all those with a frontal circulation. And they're becoming responsible of the effect. Great. If you were able to give two or three key messages to people in the community who have a frontal circulation or their families and loved ones, what would, that, what would they be? We've made a lot of progress. Uh, there's a lot of doom and gloom that has been mentioned about people who had a single ventricle. And the things now we are re all realizing, not the only one in the world, we're the first one to say it, but we are all realizing that things are much better than expected. We have perspective at 30 years, and we don't know uh, for the rest. So I'd like the people to be hopeful. Uh, I work closely with an American cardiologist from Philadelphia, and his motto is the same than mine. His goal is to give a life that is as long as mine and as good as mine to those born with a single ventricle. Mm -hmm. It's a big shot, but that's what we have to work on. Um, the second thing is, I make the comparison with uh, what President John F. John Kennedy uh, said. He said, don't think what the country can make for you, think what you can make for the country. It's the same with the front hand circulation. Don't think about what your front hand circulation can think for you. You have to be thinking about what you can do for your front hand circulation. And in that perspective, it's essential for you to help us in the research. You can play a big role in the improvement we can bring to you. But if you do not participate, there's much less we can do. So grab any opportunity to participate to research, build up the community and be a voice. Today, as you probably know, for people who have the same amount of problems, we have half of the funding with congenital heart disease, and in particular single ventricle, than people born with uh, uh, cystic fibrosis, and we have far less funding for research than people uh, who have cancer. So you have to be visible. You want things to happen for you, you have to be out there, speak out, and say that you are there, alive and well, and that you need the attention. And then the last thing is we're building up the research to try to identify the best thing to give you a very long, good life. And there's only one thing that is really clear is one th I, I say to all of the one I see since birth now, there's three things you can do for your front hand circulation. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Exercise is good for you. You have to build up a muscle mass. If you build up a, mu a muscle mass that, that flush the blood through your body, that increase the blood going back to your lungs and back to your heart, that's the best thing you can do for you. Exercise is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. It is essential for those with a front hand circulation. Great, thank you. That's really great advice too. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the Fontan Registry, their work and their research, or the Australian and New Zealand Fontan Advisory Committee, we'll post some links attached to this video. Thank you very much, and thanks very much, Eve. It's a pleasure.